Now, Secured Entrepreneurs, Miss Aurora is back. It's been wild. Okay. I want to thank all of the Secured Entrepreneurs who came on board with us in the month of August. I am so forever grateful. Okay. I want to thank all of the Secured Entrepreneurs who are on the calendar for September. I see you. I'm ready to work with you. We have two VIP spots left for September. So if you know that you are VIP, Go in the description box, click on the link to get with KJ. He will set all of that up for you, whether you are going to come to Vegas and be with us at the Four Seasons, or you're going to take your VIP virtual, okay? But Miss Aurora has two spots left for September, and I'm grateful for the VIPs that are coming on board here in September. Now, I want to say, because I'm reading your emails, and I want to thank you for emailing, please continue to do so at info at auroradayconsulting.com, Okay. Now, because of a lot of the things that many entrepreneurs are saying, Miss Aurora had to break some things down. Okay. So if you are a new entrepreneur, like I'm talking grand spanking new, you don't really have all of your entities together. You don't really have all of the things that you need in place to actually run a profitable business. Then you are a secured entrepreneur beginner, and you can click the link in the description to see what that package is, right? But if you have been in business for a little while, maybe you need restructuring. Maybe you don't have all the pieces, but you've been doing something and maybe you are earning some money, but you're not really where you want to be financially. And you know, you don't have it all together. Then you are secured entrepreneur pro because you definitely need the credit. Okay. You need access to some of the, uh, document free loans things like that, that you're going to need to actually capitalize your business because now you're at that stage, you are a secured entrepreneur pro and you can click the link in the description box below, read all about that. And you can get onto Miss Aurora's calendar, or you can go ahead and zoom with KJ and allow him to explain all of that to you. And then we can start working together. Okay. So now that Miss Aurora has got the announcements out of the way, Hey, <laughs> in this video, we're going to get into this letter that was discussed on the Dave Ramsey show. Okay. Mr. Roy does not watch Dave Ramsey. I'm, I'm, in, I'm, I'm into wealth building, so I don't watch Dave Ramsey, but this video was sent by a secured entrepreneur. Like all of you do y'all send Mr. Roy stuff, say, Mr. Roy, what is going on here? Tell us what this is about. Break it down. Okay. So this video is about a man who wrote a newspaper about his living off of a trust fund. His wife has no idea that he's been accumulating $25,000 a month from a trust fund. She thinks he sits on board some places and does whatever. He says she has no idea that he has been living off of this trust fund. And he wants to know if he's wrong by not telling her. So the question is, Ms. Aurora, is this legal to do? Like, can people really do this? Like what's going on with this? Okay. Ms. Aurora is going to show you the video. <laughs> and then Ms. Aurora is going to tell the secured entrepreneur some things. Okay. Can we do that? All right, let's get it. For those of you who do not know who I am, I am Ms. Aurora Day, and this is the Secured Entrepreneur Movement. Times article and the headline was I've hidden my trust fund for 15 years. Do I finally tell my spouse? So I'm ready for this. I'm a 44 year old man and I've been married to my spouse for 10 years. We've been together for 15 unbeknown to my spouse. I have a trust fund that provides me with a monthly income of $25,000. When we first met, I said that I worked as a consultant and 
they've never questioned it. My spouse, a dedicated doctor, works long hours and doesn't like to discuss work when not on the job. Over the years, I have repeatedly assured my spouse that they don't need to work as my income is secure and stable. They are, however, passionate about their career and have chosen to continue working. I actively serve on various boards, but I have never held a full-time job and don't plan to. Our lifestyle is comfortably upper middle class, and I am content with that. My dilemma is whether I should reveal the truth about my trust fund to my spouse. My family members have always advised against disclosing our financial situation, but the weight of the secret is becoming too difficult to bear. What do you do all day? He sits on boards. Oh, that's That's what he said. I don't know. I wonder how often like this kind of, well, we, well, we know that spouses hide things from one another. That's a, that's a consistent theme through life. Like that's a known thing. Um, but this one was just interesting. Cause I'm like, okay, 25 grand a month. I wonder what she thinks that he does that- to earn that amount of money. <laughs> I don't know. So anyways, um, what I would tell the name is withheld. They did not disclose the no name in the New kidding. York Times article. So yes, if anyone out there has this dilemma, <laughs> no, or, or no one, one else has this dilemma, or the idea that you have a secret that is too unbearable to bear that is from your spouse, listen, we always teach and talk about and believe that being on the same page with your spouse is much better. So coming clean and telling them anything and everything when it comes to money, anything you are withholding. Is not only going to just lift the weight off your shoulders that you've been carrying around having to navigate. Because I think about this situation, which this is kind of, it's true. I know it's a little absurd. But if you do think about it, I'm like, the amount of like probably lies and deception that had to have occurred. To cover the big lie. To cover the big lie. That's a lot of work in life. And I don't know who has time for that. So I'm just like, free you're, yourself. You're burning an awful lot of calories. Free being yourself. A liar, being a liar. And, and you've been with your spouse for 10. I mean, like. I mean, I think it's fine. And then, you know what? She probably still wants to be a doctor because she's passionate about her work, and that's great. But, yeah, being upfront, honest, disclosing everything, regardless of whether it's a $25,000 trust fund or it's a secret credit card that you have, whatever it is, uh, you and your spouse being on the same page is is crucial to to winning, winning long term. So you see where the man is saying that his wife is a doctor and she loves her work. And, and he has told her that she doesn't have to work, but she still works anyway. He also said that in his family, they really don't like to discuss money. Okay. They don't really, they don't really want to, you know, basically discuss money with outsiders is what I, what I read into that. We don't really want to discuss it with outsiders and, you know, am I wrong? for not revealing this to my wife. Now I'm going live with this this week because this this is a hot topic, <laughs> okay? Uh, because as many of you know, uh, Mr. Robert is the trust goddess, okay? So I service many clients who have this particular, I don't wanna call it issue, scenario, all right? Now, remember Mr. Aurora shared with the secured entrepreneurs how it is you would go about having a prenuptial agreement and what the requirements are for you to have a prenuptial agreement, right? Now, if this man who wrote the letter had a prenuptial agreement, then he would have had to reveal his sources of income to his wife, okay? In order to really come into agreement for that for that prenuptial agreement, in order, in order to really come clean because that's, that's part of how it is that prenuptial agreement will be held up in court. Okay. Because if it is found that there were some things left out, then the wife would have a win in voiding that prenuptial agreement. Right? So he, this letter doesn't say whether he has a prenuptial agreement with his wife, but if he did and he concealed this, that could be an issue. Okay. That could be a problem. If they have no prenuptial agreement and he wants to continue to have his trust fund and all that stuff, like, and and that's his business. He can do that. Then guess what? He can do that. And I would suggest that for all secured entrepreneurs. Okay. 
we see what is happening to people because I'm not going to get on the whole women are paying this and men are paying. I'm not going to do that. I'm going to say it's happening to people. But yes, it is being highlighted that it is happening to a lot of women. We see that now Holly Berry is paying her ex-husband. So she's paying two men. It, it's it's not intelligent. It, 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 it's not intelligent. Okay. That's what I'm going to say. But it's not intelligent for anybody to do this, especially women. But for the second time now, Holly Berry is paying her ex-husband alimony, child support. He's sitting up there talking about he's a single father. I don't know what kind of men are out here. I really don't. Okay. Um, and this is not all men because Miss Aurora has many, many marvelous, lovely, luxurious men around. Okay. Kiss, kiss, hugging, hugging. Okay. Um, I'm talking about these, these individuals who don't have a problem with relinquishing their masculinity in this way. Okay. And so there are some instances where you already know, and I said this in the last video when we discussed this, that a majority of people don't really trust the people that they're married to anyway. They're not even viewing the person in that light. They're there to get what they want to get from the person. And possibly when their need has been met, they're ready to go anyway. And we see that it's happening all over. Okay. We see that people don't stay in relationships long. We see that people don't stay in marriages long. And a majority of people who are getting together, um, are, are, are the, 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 the togetherness is based on some type of codependent need anyway. Right? So when the jig is up, it's over. And the person who was cared for, okay, is going to catch a financial win because they can prove that they have a lifestyle because their spouse provided it for them. Okay. So in the event that you have a fund, okay, that you are living off of, you are the beneficiary and you get payments on a monthly basis or you get payments on a quarterly basis and you want to have a legal marriage, meaning you're going to get a marriage certificate. Uh, I'm going to say no on the whole, I'm revealing all of this. This person that I'm with does not need to know all of that. Okay. Now I want all of the secured entrepreneurs to comment below about this, this letter and the scenario, and you can come for Miss Aurora. That's all fine and good because remember, this is about wealth and action over here. So that means that we protect everything. That means that we already come prepared when you want to get into a partnership, because that's a real marriage, right? The partnership, right? You're already going to have a premarital trust. You're already going to have one. All right. So we're going to avoid all of this. So if, if I make a premarital trust with you, okay. If you know that I'm being funded by a trust that was left to be to me by grandparents, great grandparents, parents, aunties, uncles, whomever, okay. Or a, a deceased spouse that happens a lot. All right. You already know that I have certain things prepared for you. You already know that there are certain things prepared for me in the event that this partnership no longer ceases to exist. Okay. We already have an agreement in place that lets each of us know what we walked in here with, what we're walking away with. And so we're amicable, right? For the most part, many people, including a lot of clients here with Aurora Day Consulting, they will get prenuptial agreements when one person out earns the other person. I don't normally find two, for lack of a better phrase, evenly yoked people. Two people who are, are in the finance, in the same financial space doing prenuptial agreements. I've not found that. I've only found that when one spouse out earns the other significantly, uh, the, the couples who are, are financially astute together will do marital trusts. Okay. And they will have other things in place. Uh, they will, they will have elaborate, uh, life insurance policies that cover certain things, uh, you know, um, whole life insurance policies that cover certain things. Okay. To protect and prevent and all of these things. All right. So the answer to the question is if in fact the, the, the gentleman who wrote the letter 
does not have a prenuptial agreement, then he can continue to keep his little trust fund secret if he chooses to legally, he can do that. Okay. And then the answer to the next question is, would, would, would you say that this was a good thing to do? I'm saying yes. Okay. I'm saying yes, because it is about your security. Okay. It is about your anonymity because that's what we're about here in the secured entrepreneur movement. All right. And you have to always be, you know how, you know how it's like buyer beware. Okay. You're a buyer when you get into a partnership. Okay. You're a buyer. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. So you gotta, you have to be aware, right? So the other person doesn't really know everything that you have going on because that can really plant seeds in a person's mind, especially at the very beginning, they're already out to, to deceive you. Okay. And this is not every person, but we see this happen a whole lot. So I want all of the secured entrepreneurs to comment below and let me know your thoughts on, okay, this man and his letter and, you know, his little indirect stuff in there that I'm going to address live this week because it's deep. Okay. And if in fact you personally would hide your finances from a spouse on this level and for what reason. Okay. So that's all Mr. Roar wanted to share in this video. All right. So Mr. Roar is going to be back with a whole lot of stuff. This is a hot, hot, hot month. All right. And once again, you know, you can find me, Miss Aurora Day at auroradayconsulting.com. And until next time, 